Let me first start off this conversation by saying, by no means am I saying that I'm an expert in any of the foreign affairs between Israel and its countries. I do, however, know this. I stand with Israel, and they have every right to defend themselves against terrorists. I also stand with the Palestinian people. They have every right to live in peace. How do we get there? I have no idea. If you know anything about the history in that area, it's very complicated. They have been going at each other for decades, and there is no easy solution, unfortunately. But we have to have conversation. But I do know this. Underneath the Trump administration, we had some sort of peace in the Middle East. And now underneath Biden's administration, we are closer to World War III than we ever have been since the Cuban Missile Crisis. So something has to give. When I was campaigning to be Michigan's next governor two years ago, I was one of the first conservative candidates to actually visit the Dearborn area and sit down with community leaders and have constructive conversation. And what I found were they are very passionate, loving, and a conservative people. The Democrats over the past two decades, they're the only ones that have gone in that area and they've made a lot of empty promises to these people. So we have to have conversation. So I'm going to share with all of you a rally that they had in Dearborn last night. It's a pro-Palestine rally. And you're going to feel the emotion, the passion, and there is some hate. But if we don't have conversation and we don't see the other people's perspective, perspective, excuse me, then we're never going to come to a solution of peace. Will there be peace? I have no idea. We can only pray because I know the true victims are the civilians on both sides of this conflict. And unfortunately, with every terrorist act, it creates more hate. With every missile or bomb that gets dropped, it creates more hate. And we have to come together with conversation. It's not easy, but I'm willing to have conversation with anyone. I've actually reached out to some of the leaders in that community to see if they would like to come on the show and talk. They haven't responded yet. And if they do, I'll bring them on the show because we need conversation. So let's listen in to what some of the speakers said last night. Before we get started, I just want to welcome you all. Uh, thank you all for coming. It's so beautiful to see so many people here from different backgrounds, uh, different religions. Um, I know we got a lot of people here. Do we have any people from Lebanon? A- anyone from Syria? What about Yemen? Good afternoon, everybody. Good evening. How are you feeling? 
Now, we are going to be respectful today of all our speakers. Please only chant when we chant. We want to be organized. We want to make sure that we are sending a unified message. And we are here today, brothers and sisters, lovers of justice, freedom, the truth. We are here today in Dearborn, our community's capital, to say with a loud and clear voice, free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! We are not ashamed to stand with the legitimate rights of Palestinians to live free from occupation and apartheid. We say today, free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! My name is Amir Zahir. I'm the child of Palestinian refugees, survivors of the 1948 Nekbin catastrophe that turned 800,000 of our proud people into stateless refugees. And yes, we Palestinians are a proud Arab people with a deep, beautiful history. We're the people of Edward Said and Mahmoud Darwish and Hanan Ashrawi, poets, intellectuals. We are the people of the largest people in history, St. George, John the Baptist, the Virgin Mary, and Jesus. So they say they came to a land without a people, but no, as my mom says. They took it fully furnished. Stand up if you are a 1948 refugee or the child or the grandchild of a 1948 refugee. Stand up if you're one of those people. That's right. Keep standing where you are. Keep standing now. Stand up with them if the Israeli occupation and wars have touched your family anywhere in the world. In Lebanon, in Jordan, in America. See? That is why we are here. This is something that affects us all. We want the media to know. This is something that affects us all. We are the real life victims of Zionism. Have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. Just last week, we lost one of our community heroes. George Houdi was one of the most prolific activists for Palestine and Arab American history. He was born in Jerusalem, in our capital, and he made Michigan his home. He worked for Palestine quietly and diligently, but never compromised or sought fame. And last month he told us that he wants to be remembered as a Nekba survivor and we send his family our love here today. Now let's get something straight today here in Dearborn. We are no longer going to be nice and use kind words when we talk about what's happening in Palestine. Is it a conflict? No. It's an occupation. It's apartheid. It's racism. When they kick people out of their homes in Jerusalem and everywhere else, it is an eviction? No, it's ethnic cleansing. We know what it is. They try to make it complicated. It is not complicated. They say we've been fighting each other for thousands of years. That's a lie. It's not complicated. They are kicking us out, stealing our land, and not letting us come back because we're the wrong religion or wrong race. It's very simple. This is not complicated. This is simply racism, apartheid, occupation, and ethnic cleansing, and that's what we are here today to protest. That's what we are here today to say we stand against. It's been going on since 1948. It's not complicated. And they will try to distract everybody by saying that we are a people full of hate. But nothing could be further from the truth. We do not hate people for who they are. We hate occupation. We hate apartheid. We hate racism. But we don't hate people. Look around you. There are people here from every race and religion. We are a room full of love, full of hope, full of faith. We love our homeland. We love our people. We love justice. So don't let them get it twisted. This is not complicated. When you go to a Black Lives Matter rally, you see Palestinian flags. When you go to a white supremacy rally, you see Israeli flags. This is not complicated. When Zionists march down the street, they say death to Arabs. When we march down the street, we say free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. This is not difficult, everybody. When Joe Biden says Israel has a right to defend itself, that means Israel has the right to murder Palestinian children. We see you. We see what you're saying. When Joe Biden says unwavering support for Israel, that means they can flatten whole residential buildings like they've been doing in Gaza. We see him. Today, it was reported that Joe Biden did not urge Crime Minister Netanyahu to, to, to urge restraint. He did not say that. He gave the Israeli Prime Minister a green light for genocide. And make no mistake, that's what they are doing to our people. They're trying to get rid of us, but we are not going anywhere. 
The Democratic Party came into our communities and they said, please save us, please save us, please help us defeat Trump. Joe Biden sits in that White House because of Arab Americans. They asked us to save America for Donald Trump. Now we are asking everybody to help us save Palestine from Joe Biden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't need people like him because we have the truth. We have the truth. That is the most powerful thing that we all hold in this room today. If Martin Luther King were here today, he would say, Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! If Malcolm X were here today, he would say, Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! If Rosa Parks were here today, she would say, Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! And make no mistake, if Jesus were here today, he would say, Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! So we are a room full of love. Before we start, I want you to take a moment and look at the person next to you and tell them thank you for coming today. That's right. Now I, love, I want you to look at these people and tell them I'm proud of you. Now I want you to look at these people and tell them I love you. Because we are a room full of love for justice and the truth. Our first speaker coming up today, he represents the Palestine Aid Society. Please welcome the Imam of the ICD, our brother Imam Imran Salha. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! End the occupation now! End the occupation now! End the occupation now! My dear brothers and sisters in humanity, the Palestinians that stand up for their rights, that protest peacefully, that they cross the border, they do not love to die. They love life. And because they love life, they wanted to stand up for their rights. Nobody loves life more than the Palestinian. We love our food, we love our weddings, we love our ceremonies, we love our families, we love our people. However, there is a movement that wants to dehumanize the Palestinian, to justify all of the murder and all of the massacres, to say to the world, well, they're not even human. They don't even love life. But Mahmoud Darwish said it best when he said, we love life. Every opportunity that we have to celebrate, we make Makluba and Mensef and the best of Dabka. Nobody does Dabka the way that we do Dabka. We love life. And that is why we protest. And subhanAllah, you will never find us stopping. If you really had a claim to the land, O oh Israeli, why did you run away like a chicken? And why is it that you had to pull us from our roots and kill us in order for us to leave our homes? We will never leave. And wallahi, every baby, every home, every single baby like Ali Dawabsha, 18 months in 2015, burned to death. And his parents, wallahi, I've seen Ali in my dreams, burned to death. And his parents succumbed to the wounds. Wallahi, I don't know if they died from the burning wounds or if they died from seeing their son being burned to death. Subhanallah. And the Israeli settler that burned them, he went off the hook with no charges whatsoever. But they left the fire in our hearts that will burn that state until its demise. Thank you very much, Amen. Right, as we all know, we all, raise your hand if you have family in Palestine. Look how many people that is. I want to, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to pause right there. Obviously, you can feel a lot of anger, a lot of frustration. Didn't know what the speaker who was kind of managing this said something about, you know, white supremacy rallies. You'll see nothing but um, Israeli flags. You know, last time I checked, like white supremacists, a.k.a. Nazis, they don't like the Jewish people. So never been to a white supremacy rally. So I can't comment if there's Israeli, Israeli flags there or not. Um, but I don't know. However, what this guy was talking about with their people who went over the border have every right to protest. 
Now, the, the footage that I've seen, that wasn't protest, that was murder. Um, these terrorists, Hamas, came over and just slaughtered women, children, grandmothers, grandfathers, took hostages, rape, um, just desecrated bodies. And I know the Israelis have done the same with desecrating bodies because I've seen some of that footage there. And that's what the problem is, is there's so much information. There's so much misinformation. You have social media personalities and public figures like Ben Shapiro, very passionate on the Israeli side. And obviously you see a lot of other folks that are very passionate on the other side. And you got Nikki Haley saying, you know, burn it down the ground and Mike Pence saying, you know, level it and everything else. A lot of personalities on both sides. And I think most of us sit back or we're just like pulling out a hair and wondering what the heck's going on. Again, let's, let's revisit. This has been going on for decades. The gentleman said since 1948. So a lot of, a lot of trauma on both sides, a lot of innocent civilians on both sides. Again, Israel has every right to defend itself against terrorists. The Palestinian people have every right to live in peace. And that is what we must strive to bring to that area. Is it easy? No. Do I have the solution? Hell no. But we have to continue to have conversation because what you're hearing is emotion, is passion, is folks who have experienced this firsthand. I have even talked with some of the community leaders, like I said, from Palestine, whose families and loved ones were killed in missile strikes, innocent civilians. And I don't know, but if that happened to my family, I think I would be very passionate too. So I think it's just important. The reason I'm doing this show today is to bring both sides of the story. And that's how we figure it out. We can't just trust the corporate media anymore in a narrative because we've been lied to so many times. A nice example is Iraq, the Iraqi war. We went over there for weapons of mass destruction. Guess what? There weren't any. And a lot of Americans lost their lives. And a lot of Iraqis lost their lives too. But again, I'm here to bring the conversation to all of you so you can hear both sides. Obviously, you're hearing a lot of political figures and everything else, even Governor Whitmer, which they they mentioned, and President Biden take the stance of Israel, which is this is that's what they do. But we have to get both sides because what I always say, is there something written on that paper? And you all would say no. And I would say, yes, there is. And you all would look at this piece of paper right now and say, Garrett, you're full of crap. There's nothing on that piece of paper. You're crazy. And I say, no, you're crazy. Who's right? Who's wrong? Same piece of paper, different perspective. And once we see both sides, that's when we can start to have conversation and say, oh, I see your perspective. But I just wanted to point out, you know, I disagree with the speaker, or what he just said, like they have every right to come over and protest. No, you have every right to protest peacefully. However, you have no right to come over and murder civilians. That's terrorism. And I stand for Israel defending itself against terrorists. Here we go. Our next speaker, please come and join me. Our next speaker just joined us in America. He was born here in America, but he's lived his life in Palestine, and now he's back here with us, and he has a story. I need everybody's attention. If you want to record, this is a good time. Please help me welcome our brother, Ripi Karaja. My name is Ruki Karaja. I was born in California and raised up in Ramallah, Palestine. I am an American citizen. While in Palestine, I suffered greatly from the Israeli occupation. I was kidnapped by the occupation forces three times. Once, they broke into my family's home. Police, dog, police dogs attacked us. A few years ago, I was arrested by the occupation forces. I was questioned for over 100 days. I was not allowed to see a lawyer for 40 days after that. During my time in the Israeli jails, I was repeatedly tortured both physically and psychologically by the Israelis. Representative from the American government, my government, visited me. I showed them the sign of the torture on my body. They told me, there is nothing we can do for you. I was brought 
in front of a military, military court. The settlers who live next to me are tried in Israeli civilian courts. Since I'm a Palestinian, I was tried in an illegal military court by an occupation officer, not even a judge. I had absolutely no rights, either as a Palestinian or as an American. A few weeks ago, I finally made it to the U.S. When I arrived to the airport, I was detained by the American Border Control. The officer told me, an American, that he needed to check if he could let me into this country. He should told me to come home. Israel is apartheid. Israel terrorized Palestinian people every single day. I lived it, I know it, I have the scars to prove it. Occupation in apartheid must be in free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. All right, so now we're getting some first-hand accounts. Don't know this person, but it seems like he had some situations that happened to him. Um, interesting, but let's let's move to this next speaker. Okay, I want you all to listen in. He seems to come to me kind of like what I've been saying. We must have peace. And a lot of the people in the crowd didn't like what he has to say. Okay. But at least they gave this person an opportunity to speak. But again, just listen in. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening. Let me, let me start by saying this. The killing of innocent civilians, no matter their ethnicity or background, must be universally condemned. Did you hear what he just said? The killing of civilians must be condemned. To me, absolutely 100% in agreement with this guy. More innocent people will be killed. More innocent people will be killed as the hostilities continue. And our elected leaders must do everything in their power to immediately stop the bloodshed. We are all united in our calls for peace in the Middle East. But if we want to break the cycle of violence that costs so many innocent lives, we must create the conditions for peace to prevail. We must truly believe that no child is more valuable than another. Again, I repeat, we must truly believe that no child is more valuable than another. Again, like this is, this is the, I don't want to say scary, but concerning part of this entire rally is this guy is calling for peace. And to me, he's trying to bring conversation, which is needed. And the crowd doesn't want anything to do with it. That's what I hear. Okay, I wasn't there, but that's what I hear. And you're going to start to see people start shouting at him. But to me, he's trying to bring conversation and peace and saying the obvious, like the civilians, the violence, the bloodshed is going to get worse, right? Unless we have peace. And that all of God's children... All of God's children deserve to live with dignity. So we must ask, how can peace, how can peace prevail? How can peace prevail when Palestinians are routinely stripped of basic human rights and lack access to health care, clean water, electricity and security? Can peace prevail when over two million Palestinians, over half of them children, are trapped in an open air prison called Gaza and have their apartments, schools, and hospitals bombed by Israel every few years? I hear you all. I hear you all. Yes, I'm for the speakers that are up here, and I hear the frustration. I hear you. Let him finish what he's saying, and then we can all talk, please. I understand. I hear you. I'm with you. I hear you. I'm with you. I hear you. I'm with you. Permanent military occupation is not a formula for peace. Israeli leaders have made it clear that it is their goal to ensure Palestinians 
never have their own state and that they intend to annex all Palestinian land to Israel. The Netanyahu government has said that building illegal settlements in the occupied West Bank is their top priority. Israel's system of apartheid has been recognized by human rights organizations around the world, including in Israel. Permanent apartheid will not make anyone's children safer and will fail to break the cycle of violence we are witnessing. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of control. I understand there's a lot of emotion. I understand. And I am with everybody. And I know certain words trigger, but I think you have to listen to our brother Sam's words. He was not pleading for peace. He was saying peace is not possible unless justice comes first. That is what he's saying. He was saying what we all say, no justice. There's a reason we say no justice first. So please give everybody a chance, sister. I'm with you. I understand. Everyone's emotions are high. They are murdering our people. They are mastering our people. They are committing a genocide. I know. But we have to make sure that we listen to everybody and talk and let them talk. And we have to listen to the words that they are saying. So, out. Again, just want to point out, like, two wrongs don't make a right. I think that's a golden rule, regardless of what your beliefs are, religious beliefs, personal beliefs. Two wrongs do not make a right, because if you continue to do wrong one another, you're going to continue to breed more violence, because look, every terrorist act that kills Israelis, those families are imprinted with more and more hatred to that side. And every bomb that is dropped on Gaza, or any Palestinian person, or regardless of what country, that's going to breed what? More future violence, because they're going to hate the side that dropped the bomb. That is just a never-ending vicious cycle. Until we end that cycle, there's going to continue to be just a huge amount of destruction on both sides. Again, not saying I have the solution. I'm here just to talk it through, have conversation, not believe everything that you're seeing on Twitter and social media personalities and politicians like Nikki Haley saying, finish them, finish them. Lindsey Graham saying, just level the place. Mike Pence saying, just do it. To me, I we're done with the warmongering because all that does is fill the pocketbooks of BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street. That's the ultimate why, folks. We demolish cities in war, and they come in and rebuild and make money. Again, just here to call it on how I see it. But if they're going to take that stance on, hey, we're going about peace. We're not going to have any peace until justice. And justice is going over there and murdering other civilians from the other side. You're not going to get very far, and you're going to have to pay the consequences and vice versa, right? We need to bring him back to the negotiating table. That's what President Trump was affected at doing. My two cents. I understand. Now, please, I don't want to have anybody leave. Let's make sure that we respect our speakers. I promise I'm going to let everybody get their emotions out. That's why I'm here. You all know me. I've been here for years in these streets making sure that it happens. I'm the one that they try to take care of. I'm the one that they try to get canceled. Don't worry. I'm going to make sure that everybody is heard. Free, free Palestine. And you know what? They don't want us to say this one anymore, but I don't care. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Louder. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. No justice. 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 Now I'd like to welcome the state representative delegation for the city of Dearborn. We have three representatives in the city of Dearborn. They're each going to say, or some of them are going to say a few words. Please help me welcome representatives Karen Whitsett, Representative Aaron Burns, and Representative Al Abbas Farha. humanity 
of the Palestinian people and end the occupation now. Anything less than that is unacceptable. I stand with you and I have your backs. Thank you. As always, of course, free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. No action, no peace. Now, 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 I need you all to stay with me for a second. Because 75 years of trauma, 75 years of apartheid is a complex thing. But each of us in this room have our role to play to end that cycle. Each of us in this room are the hope for that mom in Gaza who's searching the debris for her child. We are the hope for the father who's blinded by his tears because of the death of his children. We are the hope for the people of Gaza, for the people of the West Bank, that one day we will, they will be free. We are that hope. Now, apartheid tries to steal that hope from the next generation of Palestinian and Arab Americans. That's the design of apartheid. Now tell me, how many people in this room are still ready to fight for a free Palestine? How many people in this room are gonna tell the story of Palestine? And how many people in this room will do all that they can for Palestine? Only together, only together can the hopes of a free Palestine be achieved. Now, I was inspired. I was inspired by words of the previous, by together, I mean us in this room, my man, you know that. Now listen, now listen up. Because the last speaker, Mr. Riddle, was up here, and his voice was trembling. His voice was, was, was a little raspy. Because how old he is. But what does that tell you? That tells you that regardless of where you are, Regardless of how you may project, you speak the truth, even if your voice may tremble a little bit. And Mr. Riddle proved that for us here today. So when we say, free, free Palestine, free, free Palestine, we mean that we're still fighting. We mean that together, each of us today have a call to action. You gotta go on your Twitter. You gotta go on your Facebook. You gotta go on your Instagram. We have to keep the story going. We must reclaim our narrative. That is how we liberate and free Palestine. That is how we end the occupation. Thank you. And Abbas is right. If we want hands with us. Our next speaker is from the American Human Rights Council, AHRC. Please help me welcome our brother, Khaled Turani. Thank you. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Some people woke up on October 7th thinking that history started on October 7th. Let me share with you the history of October as far as the Palestinians are concerned. 1953, the massacre of Qibya when they demolished 41 houses on 49 Palestinians. 1956 in October, when they committed another massacre against the Palestinians, that was not in October. Then in 1990, when they opened fire in Al-Aqsa Mosque and they killed 30 worshippers and injuring 150. Tell me this is not a terrorist state. 
If you woke up in the morning of 7th of October and you thought that history just started, we got some news for you. And when then we get our president, we get our governor here, Richard Lutner, who all of a sudden is all... Yes. All well, you know I have a comment on that. It seems like they don't like Whitmer just as much as we don't like her. Just keeping it real. About the Israelis, no concern for the Palestinians. You can pretend to be liberal. You can pretend to be a Democrat. But you are racist in your core when you don't see my humanity. And we have to have them. We have to have them answer. No more, like my brother Hamza has said, no more coming to our community, eating balawa and saying, Inshallah and Salaamu Alaikum, and then you will get our clap and you get our vote. No more. Now we are made victim twice as Palestinians. Thank you. Give, give us a second. Would you please give us the courtesy of listening? We are victimized twice as Palestinians who are victimized by the Israeli occupation and as Americans when our tax dollars is used to shed the blood of our Palestinian brothers and that have got to stop. We will tell Joe Biden no more. We will tell Gretchen Whitmer no more. Where are our representatives? Where are the people that we have elected? They are not welcomed in our community anymore. I would rather vote for Mickey Mouse yeah. than vote for one of those. Yes. Yeah. And one last time, free, free Palestine. So you can hear that they're frustrated with their elected officials because that is one thing that the Dems have been doing in that community, which I had conversation when I was there. They would come in and, you know, try to promise them everything, get their vote, and then abandon them. And now they're starting to awaken. Now, again, it's interesting to hear their perspectives on things. And this is why I'm showing you all this, is to give you both sides of this. See the other side, what they're saying, what they feel, and then we're going to get the narrative of what the Israelis feel, which we're seeing a lot um, on social media right now, and corporate media and everything else. Again, complicated issue. I don't have the solution, folks. I wish I did. I just don't. I do know this. Violence breeds more violence. And I'm hearing a lot of hate. Again, I'm going to take the stance. I'm going to say it again. The Israelis have every right to defend themselves against terrorists and to go after those terrorists. Now, unfortunately, these terrorists entrench themselves within the civilian population or population. So unfortunately, civilians are going to die. And again, on the other side of the spectrum, the Palestinian people, they deserve every right to live in peace. I don't know how we get there, but we have to have this conversation. We have to start seeing the other person's perspective and start there. If not, I feel that one side is going to wipe out the other side, kind of like what we did with the Native Americans, right? There's going to only be one paradigm of thinking that lasts unless we continue to fight for peace. I don't want to take action with violence. I don't want to speak of violence. I want to take the action of peace with conversation and more conversation. Will it be tough? Will it be vocal? Will it be loud? Will it be passionate and emotional? Yes, but that is a whole hell of a lot better than what I'm seeing on the news and on social media with innocent civilians on both sides being slaughtered. All right, this is the last, uh, I think last speaker that I have for all of you, then we'll finish up. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! I said, make it shake! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Our next speaker is the only person running for Senate in the state of Michigan who looks like us, knows us, and is not afraid to talk about Palestine and the truth about Palestine. Please help me welcome our brother, Nasser Beydoun. No justice, no peace. 
everybody in this room, I want to introduce some people to you. Our governor, Gretchen Whitmer. today because they were busy dancing yesterday. I want you to remember that. I want you to remember, before you end the occupation in Palestine, we have to end the occupation in Congress. In order to do that, you need to be active. You need to get involved. Every politician like Amr says that comes into this community and wants our vote and wants our money, he better support the Palestinian cause. And don't come here. Because if you don't support the Palestinians, you have no humanity. And if you have no humanity and you don't believe in justice, you have no right to serve and represent us as a people. Free, free Palestine. It starts with you. If you go home today and you go to bed and you kiss your kids goodnight, then you're not going to free Palestine. You're not going to free anything. Because you have to remember every single child that a building is falling on his head today with our American tax dollars and our president, Sleepy Joe. <laughs> Telling everybody, telling the world, if you dare think of doing anything, know where America stands. Oh, Joe Biden. America needs to stand for the truth. And the only way they're going to know the truth if we tell it. So never be afraid, never shy away, and always say, free, free Palestine. Thank you. Did not know that he was running for U.S. Senate. That will be interesting. I wouldn't mind trying to bring him on the platforms to get his perspective on some things. That is for sure. Um, again, I don't like with them making those kind of statements that, hey, you either support us or you're the enemy. Based, basically kind of what they're saying. Again, I'm going to make the stance. And it's a hard stance because you take arrows from both sides. But I feel that it's the right stance, in my humble opinion, is again, Israel has every right to defend itself against terrorists. It truly does. Um, and the Palestinian people, they have every right to live in peace. How do we get there, folks? I don't know. Um, and a lot of what I heard on that rally, I didn't have all the speakers. That's why you saw some of it cut out. Um, I just tried to get the ones that were relevant um, to what this show was going to be about. That's for sure. I didn't have time to showcase every speaker. I think I left several of them out. But it's on um, it's on Facebook, the entire live, and it's from BG on the scene. That's the letters BG on the scene. I'll give him credit for shooting this live in the description, um, and he's pretty active on social media. So I wanted to bring to you all, not political narrative, not a corporate media narrative, but actual words from the mouths of the people who are living this not just what you're reading and everything else. I really strongly believe that's my job in this is to give you as much information as possible to be empowered so we can have that constructive conversation. But again, I just don't feel um, to say you need to pick a side. I just, uh, I can't. It's just too complicated of an issue. Um, but I'm going to stand by what I just said. Israel deserves every right to defend itself against terrorists. And Palestinian people deserve the right to live in peace. How do we get there? Time will tell. But I do hope that peace prevails. And we do not have to see and witness more destruction, more killing, more murderers, um, more terrorist activity. Just, uh, it's, it's tough. It's tough to watch. We're better than that as human beings. So, I wanted to bring you all that information. Share this far and wide. God bless you. God bless the state of Michigan, of course, and always God bless these United States. Until next time.